Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashmel, Shai Bashmar Rakak, Radash, and double honors to the elder apostles and as well as even the bishops as well. And Yahweh Bashmel, Shai Brakatham, to the 144,000, and as well as the one third. And it's your brother Laban coming at you in another video. And I just want to address this over here concerning these concentration camps that, um, you know, the American powers that be are looking to build to detain those that are going to be considered uh, political dissidents, those that have a strong view against their government. Um, as this reads, uh, feds building massive detention facilities in all 50 states to imprison political dissidents documentary claims, which is going to be out on the 24th, if I'm correct, of October of this year, right? Now, before I say anything else, I want to say that um, I remember years ago, about over 10, a little over 10 years ago, I remember the elder Apostle Gabal, he was speaking about um, the concentration camps. And the elders would touch on it from time to time, right? And I remember you had a lot of scoffers and scorners and people just placing, you know, stupid comments on the comment board. Because... Um, of course, they don't want to believe that a scenario like that could very well happen because, you know, that would then flip, <laughs> you know, their uh, reality upside down. So it's best to not know that kind of truth right there. But even so, back then, I mean, it was kind of a bit far fetched. But now, you know, as we fast forward to the year that we're in right now, it doesn't seem so crazy to think that. This could very well happen that the American people, especially those that, that are that are uh, dead set against the system, could be put into concentration camps. All right. Our elders and our apostles have been bringing this out for a very long time. All right. And I would even go as even saying probably before the 2000s, he was probably talking about this. But just by my time period of being in the truth, I remember this information being brought out by them it's a different world we live in now you know we live in a world where truth is coming out and people that once upon a time didn't want to accept the truth they ain't got no choice but to accept it because it's right in front of your face now um so now let me go and read revelations 12 and uh verse 12 therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them and why are we to rejoice because when all hell breaks loose in that time, that's going to only but declare that the transition is going to be. Because before we get to the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be, you know, a, a dramatizing time that has to be in effect first. You know, as everything happens in life, you know, before something good happens, something bad has to happen first. Before you're exalted, you have to be brought low. All right. So the elect, you know, we're going to face a new low that we never faced before. We're going to experience harsh conditions that we've never experienced before. But guess what? That's going to bring in a world of joy that we never experienced before. That is the kingdom of heaven. So it needs to come. So that's why we should be rejoicing. And plus, we know all of the scriptures, which provides comfortability. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he know that he have but a short time. And yes, this devil is going to come down against Jake overall. But guess what? Who he's really going to come up against are the prophets. Because the prophets are a mean to an end. The prophets are saying things which is against the system. And that's basically what a what a, um, a dissident is. A dissident is someone that publicly criticizes, has a strong view against the system. And the gospel that we preach is basically against the system. Now, I was reading an article about Canada about maybe a couple of months back ago. And a lot of brothers touched on it as well. How you can't quote. Bible scriptures 
And if you do quote Bible scriptures, certain Bible scriptures anyway, you could be had in jail. So that right there just tells you where we're going in the future. And that this society is so forthcoming with, with how satanic they really are. Now, back in the day, this society was a so um, bold in being satanic. But being that we're coming to an head, these devils are becoming more aggressive and revealing as to who they really are. All right. And at the very end, at the actual end, when the time is had, when chaos is going to ensue, that's when these devils are going to really show 100% who they really are. And guess what? Everybody is going to have to um, accept the truth that the powers that be have a very dark, sinister agenda against them. And they're not going to have no choice but to face the music of that. Anyway, having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time. And they're going to come to that realization right, up, right around the corner too. Um, now we're going to read this. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 70. For there shall be in every place and in the next city a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. And they shall be like madmen sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. And then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Which is um, reminding me of Zeph not Zeph not Zechariah 13 and 10. So you're going to have certain brothers that's, that's going to, um, you know, have it very rough with, with the, um, you know, with, with the powers that are going to be sent forth, man, to take you out of your homes. To take all of your resources, which there's all, there's all kind of legislations on that, on how they can take every single thing that you so-called own and um, take you to a, a concentration camp. And in America, they've already had hundreds of concentration camps already already made. I believe it's about, if I'm correct, as I can quite remember, about six to eight hundred concentration camps. But they're building new ones. And why are they building new ones? Because they're going to have to put 330 plus million people in, in them bad boys, man. All right. Even people that, that claim to agree with their government, they're going to also go through this as well. Okay. Because yes, it's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble and the, the remnant are going to be tried, but also even the average person is going to have to go through this. And plus, they have to receive the judgment and all of this as well, just, just to back up, all right? But the focus here is on the elect, because you're going to have the elect that are going to have to go through these things, which is a part of our trial, to be tested. Hear ye, O, excuse me, hear, O ye, my beloved, save the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. And that's the absolute truth. Because there will be a balance to all of this. And I'm going to get there when I get there. But let me just finish this off right here. Revelations 2 and 10. Uh, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. And be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Right. So, you know, just like I said, in order for us to receive the reward of our lives, something that we can't even mentally fathom, we're going to have to go through some serious, dire situations to get this. All right. And if the spirit of the Lord is with us, we're going to get we'll be able to get through anything. All things are possible. Excuse me. Nothing is impossible with the with the most high. OK. So, yeah, you know, some of us are going to be in, in, in you know, in the uh, in the camps for a certain amount of time. But we, we're just going to have to hold on and be faithful. And plus, when you go back uh, four years ago, um, that that COV era was nothing more than a test run. You was told, look, you can't be out at a particular point in time and then you would have to go back to the crib. Because it was under lockdown measures, people were told to, um, you know, Standing on these long lines and stuff. 
and you had to wash your hands before you went into the store. All of that stuff, man. All of that stuff right there we went through, which was nothing more than a psychological operation to get us mentally prepared, which is, I would say, a form of predictive programming on the real thing, which is going to be forth to come, that they're going to stage once again. And, and this thing is going to be hella real. And you're going to know it's the real thing. All right. So there it is, man. And that's why they're, they're preparing these camps all around, because they're looking to take a lot of people into these camps, put you in a bully van and drive you to a near concentration camp, especially if you have a strong uh, critical view of your government. You going down. All right. So, yeah. And just to also quote another precept, too, in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter that tells you, um, blessed are they which are persecuted for the name of the Lord's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right. So that's the reward that we know we're going to get. But we have to go through it just like our Lord and our Savior went through it. No servant is greater than his master. And so in all of that. Right. I want to also read the book of Acts um, chapter 12. Because in all of this, Esau ain't going to just get their way in this time. There's going to be a divine intervention. There's going to be miracles that's going to be had with certain brothers. Not every brother is going to be put into a concentration camp and they're going to be they're going to be sent forth as martyrs. There's going to be some brothers that are going to have a, a miraculous experience being delivered out of these situations as such as Peter was. OK, now, some of us are going to die in that because it also mentions that in the book of Revelation, the 20th chapter that, um, you know, the souls of those are going to be beheaded. OK, but just because that's the case, you're going to have brothers now that's going to remain alive. It tells you that in the book of Mark, the, uh, the ninth chapter in the first verse that some shall stand here that shall not taste of death until they until they see the, the um the coming of the, what is it the um the coming of the son of man with great power acts 12 and verse 1 now now about that time herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex the certain of the church and he killed james the brother of john with the sword and because he saw it pleased the jews he proceeded further to take peter also then were the days of unleavened bread which was after the, um, the Passover. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quartinians of soldiers to keep him intended after Easter, which is the Passover, to bring him forth to the people. Let's prove that. The word Easter. There it is right there. Pascha, which is in the Greek. Which is alluding to the Passover. Now. The term Easter itself goes back to the goddess, which is Ishtar, which is a, um, a, 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 a sexual goddess or the goddess of fertility, if my, if my memory serves me correctly. So that's what you're basically celebrating when you partake in that, that satanic holiday, so-called anyway, because it's not a holy thing. All right. But the term Easter in the Bible, when you go into the interliner, it takes you to the word Pascal, which is alluding to the Passover. OK, so it's the Passover. Our, our ancestors was not buying no chocolate eggs to celebrate the, the goddess of Ishtar. They weren't doing that. They were celebrating the Passover. And after that came um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Which was about seven days you wouldn't eat. Leavened bread, but rather the bread you would eat would be unleavened. So now, as this reads, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto the most high for him. And when Herod would have brought forth, excuse me, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound of two chains and the keepers before. The door kept in the prison. So check this out. Um, the company of Peter was praying without ceasing for him. And this is why the miracle became. So you see the power in prayer. I'm telling you, man. And I mean, like, you know, I've even experienced this myself. Sometimes, you know, 
you get down and you and you pray to the Lord, man, and you, you know, or you could even have a, a, a just a little small prayer in your mind. And all of a sudden, right underneath your nose, the Lord answers your prayer. You don't realize it until you're consciously aware of it later on. <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, oh, yeah, I did pray for this before. So there's power in prayer. As well as you brothers know that. Uh, verse six. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound of two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saved unto him, unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Yeah, he thought he was basically dreaming, but it was actually the real thing. It was a real life scenario. <laughs> Inside joke. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. So you see, and all of this was had because his company was praying for him. So just imagine Yahweh Shai praying for us, as, as it's already been said in the book of, um, if I'm correct, in the book of, what is it, uh, John 17 or something like that. And he even told Peter that Satan seeketh to, to sift you out or something like that, right? So he said that to him and then he prayed for him. Okay. And as well as the Lord of the Lord have made sure that we're in we're in good standing because he's praying for the elect. So when all hell breaks loose, you already know we're going to be taken care of. And that's something that we have to believe by faith. Now we don't see that. But guess what? It doesn't matter what you see. It's about what you don't see, and it's the unseen powers that's going to be behind us. All right? So we got to have faith. We ain't got no choice. And guess what? Our faith will, will then lead to these miracles. So as well as I just read, right, um, Acts chapter 12 and 2, how James was killed. But Peter was was um was saved out of this right here. That this this right here just conveys the point that some brothers are gonna have to die for what they believe in, and you're gonna have the ones of us that will be delivered too. But just because the brothers that have died in the faith, that does not mean that they're not of the elect, because even Peter himself later had to die. And he was crucified upside down, by the way. Right? So the prophets, um, when you do your research, they 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 died for the sake of what they believed in. And some of them died very, very roughly. Even look at Yahweh Shah. Look at how he died. Okay? So the, the, the men that, that die in this thing, they're going to be resurrected first. And then the ones that are going to be alive shall be caught up together with them. So let me first get this over here. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump, of the most high and the dead and the anointed shall rise first and then which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words exactly so that's why we're, we're doing these lessons day to day to edify the brothers is coming in and of course, edifying each other that's in the faith, because we all need these words to encourage us day in and day out. All right. And it's all beautiful, man. It's all it's, it's all coming together. This truth, the brothers, everything's coming together the way it's supposed to come together. And that's why these devils is running mad out here. And vocab alone, once again, is coming up against brothers, man, asking brothers where they located that and stuff. And, you know, the thing of it is, the way I see it, man, like, look, we've already made ourselves quite clear that we don't want to see you vocab alone. We ain't got time to be 
checking in with you, bro. What's important to us is edifying with the gospel. We don't need to debate you. We don't need to be around you. All right. You don't need to be around us as it is written. How can two walk together except they be agreed? How can darkness agree with the light? You're in darkness. You're basically against the word of the Lord. So that would then make you a Satanist. I ain't got no business dealing with you. You ain't got no business dealing with me. Okay. And that's just the thing, man. So, you know, you can keep saying whatever you want to sing. And I think this is this is probably his last week in being in the UK. And he might have to take his ass to Phoenix, Arizona again. Take his ass back home. <laughs> All right. But yeah, and I can't forget this right here is, is very well telling, man. You know, you had an angelic being that was behind the brothers. And the brother said he looked very, uh, very stern. And he had an intimidating approach. Right. Which, you know, that's the angels. The angels are um, of a different dimension. And plus, they, you know, they definitely show why you must fear the Lord. All right. So. Again, just going back to the point, the Lord is beginning to show what he's really made out of, man, and what's really happening among us that believe in this thing. So just imagine when all hell breaks loose, you're going to start seeing a lot of miracles, man. A lot of things are going to be had. Like I said, Esau ain't going to have it his way all the way in that time of trouble. Uh-uh. There's going to be divine intervention and you're going to have angelic forces appearing out of nowhere that's going to help the servants, the prophets. You're going to have a lot of, like I said, miraculous activity going on out here that cannot be explained. Okay. So, you know, that's that, man, as well as the elder apostle said, because I did watch the live. Um, that angel was there to confirm that these brothers, the Lord is definitely dealing with these brothers and, and behind them. And, and so, of course, the Lord is dealing with all of us in, in different degrees. OK, but that's going to be well known when all hell break loose. It's going to be well known who are the Lord's chosen, because guess what? The Lord is going to grant the chosen the faith to believe in this time. And guess what? The angels are going to be doing as they may all right and for those of us that are going to die the lord is going to put the spirit upon us to accept that which some of us don't actually mind right now you know and i tell you the truth just to confess i'm one of them i don't really mind to be honest with you okay but the lord is going to give us more of a colder spirit to to get through these times we may think we colder now but the lord is going to put us in the zone that we need to be in to accomplish the mission to finish our course in regards to our faith, if we have to become mortars in doing that. All right. But ultimately, we all going to be good, man. The good guy always wins at the last. Yes, we're getting our ass whooped, but our ass whooping ain't, ain't, ain't so, ain't so, um, you know, heavy upon us like, like it is, man. All right. Things are just, things are getting better now for us. And you can feel it in the spirit. You can feel that this, this victory that, that lies ahead. And that's all I got to say, man, with this. I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashmiah, Shah Bahashem, Warakah, Kodash, and um, double honors to the elder apostles and as well as the bishops on down, and Yahweh Bashmiah, Shah Bahashem, to the elect overall, the 144,000, and as well as the one third. And I am out. Shalom.